Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us online today. Hey, I just want to say, as always, it's an honor to have you worship with us here at Rethink Life Church. And uh, I just want to say right out of the gate, happy Father's Day to all the dads, the men that are watching us. We, we just want you to know that, hey, we honor you. We appreciate you. And today is your day. And we want you to be encouraged. And my prayer that as you watch today's message and take part on what uh, God is doing in and through this time, that this day will be a day of hope and encouragement because it's our desire to speak life and to speak encouragement over your life and really everybody that's being a part of this worship experience. Well, obviously next to me is someone that for some may be a familiar face, others may not, but this happens to be my father-in-law, Dr. Rod Masteller. And in, in this, um, really in this moment during this uh, filming uh, happens to be a special week because you and my mother-in-law, Miss Linda, she, uh, you and Linda s celebrated 53 years of marriage. So congratulations on yesterday, 53 <laughs> years of marriage. That's an amazing milestone and accomplishment. And on top of that, uh, also have four amazing daughters. And I'll say this, uh, I am a little biased in the fact that I happen to marry your oldest, mm -hmm. who I believe, humbly speaking, that uh, she's she's the best of the four. That's my own. Uh, my brother-in-laws will argue with me and differ on that one. Yes. But uh, but obviously four amazing, beautiful daughters. And on top of that, 11 grandkids. Amen. And uh, now over 50 years of ministry, pastoring and shepherding. Uh, couples and parents and families for 50 years. So there's a wealth of wisdom sitting next to me today. And uh, I just thought on this Father's Day, it'd be fitting for uh, you and I just to have a conversation and to speak into the men, to speak into families that are going to be watching this. And it truly is our desire to just uh, really just speak words of encouragement and to give some practical steps that you can follow. And before we really even dive into some things, Rod, I just want to say for all of the dads today, as a special gift, because of the generosity of Rethink Life Church, we want to give you this brand new book that my wife, Michelle, and I actually wrote called The Family Shift. It's a five-step plan to help really family stop drifting and to start living with greater, uh, greater intention. And we're going to give this to you free of charge. Now, as supplies last, okay, as there's a limited supply, but if you will simply text the, text the words RTL DAD, RTL Dad, we will send this book directly to you free of charge. It's RTL Dad to the number there, 97,000, and we'll make sure you get a copy of this. Again, as supplies last. So go ahead and text us, and we want to make sure you get a copy of that. And we're going to unpack a little bit about the book and specifically just talk through some things through your life and through your years of experience as a husband and as a dad on really what parents can do to live with greater intention. And uh, I love what the psalmist teaches us in Psalm 127 verses three and five. Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Children born to a young man are like sharp arrows in a warrior's hands. How happy is the man whose quiver is full of them. <laughs> he will not be put to shame when he confronts his accusers at the city gates. I love that because children truly are a gift from the Lord. And um, just before we really begin, Rod, why don't you just share uh, as it relates just to the joy and the rewards of being a father? Well, I think that the greatest need in America is godly dads. Uh, I used to do quite a bit of work in prisons, and it was interesting that most of the people in prison would celebrate Mother's Day, but they would be angry on Father's Day. Mm. A friend of mine in Oklahoma City named Jim Craddock used to say, many girls try to find in one man, I mean in many men, what was denied them by one. Mm. And I've always tried to say to men, uh, as a father, no matter what, Touch and love your children. They need your touch. They need your love. They need your affirmation. I was um, 
thinking about uh, going and seeing a guy in Norman, Oklahoma, when Linda and I, we probably had two of our daughters, maybe Michelle and Kim, I'm not sure how many we had, um, but I know we tried four times for a boy. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work. And we have four daughters, but I tell you, I wouldn't trade a one of them for a million boys, although I'm so proud of my grandsons. I'm, we now have six grandsons Man, and awesome. five granddaughters. Got to take all of them to Israel. Boy, that was such a blessing. But anyway, um, when we were just married a few years with maybe two daughters, uh, a friend of mine, Tom Ellis, said, you need to go see Preacher Halleck. Now, Preacher Halleck was pastor of First Baptist Church of Norman, Oklahoma, and he had written a book entitled Always in Prayer. And because I was asking Tom and others, how do you be a dad, a good dad? My dad died when I was young, so, you know, I, I don't know that I really had a mentor or a model. So I was longing to be a good dad for my girls and then be able to share with men around me how to be a good dad. So anyway, we got an appointment with Dr. Halleck, went to his home. It's one of those moments I'll never forget because I was... We were in his home, and I just asked him the question, what's the most important thing you can do to be a good dad? And he said, I thought he'd say, you know, you got to pray for your children, get, live a godly life, whatever. But you know what he said to me? He said, Rod, the best thing you can do with your children is to play with them. Hmm. And what he went on to say, and I've lived that, is to touch them. Play tickle. Our girls remember one of the best things in life that they had back then was we'd get in the floor, and I'd tickle them. We'd play tickle. Mm. And I still embrace them. I still touch them. Even during this virus, we, we hug. And um, so it's so important, dads, to touch and love and play with your children. Mm. One of the things that I've tried to teach uh, men is the most important, the easiest time to have conversation with your children is to lay down with them in bed at night and uh, just let them talk to you. Because mm -hmm. I find that children and teenagers, you know, they want to stay up late at night and sleep long in the morning, but at night they'll talk to you mm -hmm. and uh, to listen to them, ask good questions, but touch them. Let them know that you love them. Even in this weird culture we live, live mm -hmm. in, you know, it's okay. I, I love Rodney. I touch him. And I touch, you need to touch your children. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't touch them, they're going to look for touch somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It's so good. It's so good. You know, one of the things, Rod, that we are facing right now, and I think it's really one of the things that's just on my heart as we continue the conversation is the world in which we live. Culture has changed so much. Yes. You know, um, you know what, what may have been normal or appropriate or embraced, um, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago in family life, things have changed so much in today's culture. And so now there is even fear or the paranoia or the concern, you know, of just showing that kind of love and affection, you know, and obviously in an in a, inappropriate way, you know, it dishonors God and is the wrong thing to do. But you're speaking in the in the from the standpoint of just a father's love. And just that gentle love and affirmation and just the support that our children desperately need from a male figure right. to have that kind of male influence in their life so that they know that they're loved, that they are affirmed, they are accepted for who they are. And, you know, the Bible teaches us in, in, excuse me, in Matthew chapter 7, I love, you know, the Sermon on the Mount. Where Jesus just, he, he, he shared so much wisdom to his audience that day, starting in Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, Matthew chapter 7, you know, it's considered to be the greatest sermon ever preached. You know, Jesus shared so much about life. Mm -hmm. But then he summarized everything he taught that day in Matthew uh, 7, verses 24 through 27. He said, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Mm -hmm. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rains came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. 
And I think for me, you know, as a dad of three now adult children and working with and talking with so many dads and families, there's so much concern about the moral and spiritual drift that has happened in our culture and in our society today. Mm -hmm. And obviously, as we're filming this, I mean, here we are dealing with a pandemic that has, you know, impacted the world. We're now dealing, we're just now on the hills of the unfortunate uh, death of George Floyd and the aftermath and just the, the heightened emotion now with the whole uh, issue of racism that is at the forefront of so many people's hearts and minds and conversations. We have so many issues facing our culture today when it comes to kids really not even understanding really who they are as far as the, as far as their true identity is concerned you have a you have a you, you have a lack of understanding where some are just questioning their whole gender identity you have you know unfortunately for many schools across the country basically god and the bible or prayer is now taken completely out of the schools mm -hmm. and so therefore it's kind of like in the book of judges where the mindset was when there had when there was no leadership, the mindset and really the, the the trend of the culture was every person did what was right in his own eyes. Right. And so now we have this almost like wheels off culture where anything goes, everybody's entitled to be who they want to be, believe what they want to believe, feel what they want to feel, do what they want to do. And it seems as though there's just a lack of a, of a strong spiritual and moral foundation. And that's the reason why Michelle and I, we, we wrote the book called Family Shift, because we just see so many people drifting. And specifically, you know, marriages and families are drifting now more than ever away from God's original plan and purpose. Right. So if there was ever a time we needed to make a shift, if there was ever a time we needed to stop and do a 180, and move in the direction that God ultimately desires for our lives, it's now. Mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, I just want to hear your heart today. You know, when you think about even just what we've done in our book uh, with the word shift, we've kind of taken it and used it as, a, as an acronym with the S simply meaning start with the end in mind. So speak into that for just a moment when it comes to just having a sense of purpose, a sense of destiny, even a vision for your marriage, for your family. You know, what would you say to a father? What would you say to a couple or to any family that's watching this today? That really the purpose of having vision and direction for your family spiritually in every other way. Well, I'd say, first of all, what's that vision and direction based on? Um, I'm 74 years old and I've been married 53 years. We have four wonderful daughters and 11 wonderful grandchildren and four great sons-in-laws were, were so blessed. And uh, we built our entire life upon the Word of God. Mm. I know our culture turns away from that, but there has to be ultimate truth. Mm. And, and some of us, uh, Rodney, some people don't believe this, but I want you to know it's absolutely true. There is a devil, and he is a liar, and he wants you to believe lies as truth. The main problem that human beings have, one of our, one of your sons, I mean, one of my sons-in-laws and in-law to you is uh, Scott Gornto, who's a great counselor, mm -hmm. and, and he helps families. He's in great demand. But what I found through the years is the problem that we have in life is that we believe lies as truth. You might believe a lie about your wife, but you think it's true. It'll run all your relationship. And she might believe a lie about you, and you can't get that across to them. So Satan, what Satan wants to do is to get you to believe lies as truth. That's why Jesus said that um, if the light, it was in Matthew 6, you mentioned that, if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? Mm. And so what happens is in raising children, and I've certainly made a lot of mistakes, and I'm so grateful for the grace of God, because he said, my grace is sufficient. Out of weakness, we were made strong. And out of failure comes success. And I've certainly failed. But here's what I've really tried to base my life on, is every morning of every day of all my life, I've gotten up and I've gotten in God's word, longing to know the truth. Jesus, standing before Pilate, said, those on the side of truth 
listen to me. Hmm. And you will become what you listen to. And you will become what you believe, even if your beliefs are not true. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Hmm. Jesus also said, Satan is a liar and the father of it. He speaks of his own because he lies. He wants you to believe a lie is truth and then translate that into the way you raise your family and it'll bring complete chaos mm. into your marriage and into raising your children. Mm. So I would just plead with you, whether it's as Rodney being your pastor, find someone who can help you walk in truth. So, so good. Well, if truth or having a sense of spiritual destiny as far as our belief system, you know, as Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Mm-hmm. No one comes to the Father except through me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we find our truth in Christ. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a relationship that we have with him. Right. So if our desire as a husband and a wife And if we have children as parents, if our desire is to know the truth and to walk in that truth and to live out that truth and to ultimately point our children to the truth, Mm -hmm. who is Jesus, that that really is our vision. That that takes that takes the shape of our destiny, Mm -hmm. because Jesus said, uh, you know, as you mentioned about Satan in John 10, 10, the enemy, Satan, has come to steal, kill and destroy. Mm -hmm. But he said that I've come that you may experience life and have it to the full. Right. So the only way we can have the fullness in fulfilling God's destiny, his plan, and his purpose is to embrace the truth of walking out his plan and walking out his purpose in a way that ultimately honors God. And so with that in mind, you know, in our book called The Family Shift, we also talk about another area that's extremely important, which is a part of really the foundation of truth. And that is the hold to core values. That's the H, hold to core values. And so, you know, Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these other things will be added unto you. Mm -hmm. And obviously we live in a culture today where we chase after all the other things Mm -hmm. first. And then sometimes God is an afterthought. And unfortunately, a lot of couples or even a lot of families don't even think about God until there's a crisis or until the wheels come off or, you know, they hit a roadblock and they don't know who to talk to or where to turn. Right. But yet, as I mentioned earlier in that passage in Matthew 7, it's that foundation that's so important. Because if we don't have those core values to hold it all together, Mm -hmm. then when the storms of life come, it erodes, it washes away you know, the things that are truly most important. Mm -hmm. So what would you advise? You just mentioned, you know, spending time in the word of God, but speak into that a little bit more, just in ways that parents and and men, especially as dads watching this, what can we do to build strong values into our family? Well, one of the things that's very important to know, and, you know, you can kid yourself if you want, but what comes out of your life is what you believe. Mm -hmm. And so your foundations have to be, this is what I believe. And so Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon me, on you, and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart. You shall rest for your, find rest for your souls. I think every human being, I try to say this quite often, every human being on this earth is looking for inner peace. Mm-hmm. And inner peace only comes when you're walking with Christ. And I can say that after 74 years, I've done it for 74 years. Uh, There have been some times I haven't, but 53 years of marriage Mm. and raising four daughters who are adults now and had their own children. And I see them building into their lives, just like you and and Michelle have built into your children. But the issue in life is what do you really believe? And again, I come back to the fact of this foundation. If you don't believe the truth, and some people mock others, Christians saying, would well, you have all the truth? Well, I hope so. I know so. But I don't say that arrogantly. I say that with a broken heart mm-hmm. because so many, so many are missing the truth. And I think Christians have become kind of arrogant about it, some of us. But I hope under God that you'll realize that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Mm-hmm. And I want to humbly say to you, God has blessed my life. I want to humbly say to you, I long for you to walk in truth. Mm -hmm. I long for you to get into this book 
and go, Jesus come into your life. One of the problems we have is people trying to walk in truth, Rodney, by being a church member and not being born again. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, you know, I have been with you, but I shall be in you. It's when his spirit comes to dwell within you, then he begins to reveal truth to you. Mm -hmm. And when he reveals truth to you, it just grabs you and you say, I want this for my family. So walking and abiding in truth and dads, I just want to challenge you. It's not easy. In fact, the enemy will do everything he can to keep you from it. Walk in truth. And if you don't do anything else, just get the book of John, the gospel of John, and read it. Hmm. And ask the Spirit of God to reveal truth to you. Hmm. Jesus said that truth only comes through revelation, through the revealing work of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to have Rodney to teach you. It helps. But if you'll get in the Word, the Holy Spirit will teach you. Mm -hmm. And He will give you wisdom to love and train and teach your daughters. One of the things that I want to say that is so important is in Galatians, that the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and gentleness and kindness. Here's something I want to say to you very firmly but lovingly. What comes out of your life is who you are and is what you believe. If it goes on to say the works of the flesh, adultery, porn, pornography, all that stuff that comes out of our lives, if we're not walking with the Spirit, anger, bitterness, resentfulness, unforgiveness, all of that is a work of the enemy. But when you allow the Spirit of God to have control of you, what comes out of your life is love and joy and gentleness and kindness and peacefulness, all those things, and self-control. So anyway, you need to just ask yourself, what's coming out of my life? Hmm. What's coming out of my life? And I tell you, a lot of people I found, Rodney, a lot of men are angry. They're angry <laughs> because they've tried everything in life to find meaning, and it hasn't worked, so they take it out on others. Hmm. But I challenge you, find the truth. I beg of you. I beg of you. Get in the truth. And the truth will set you free, and not only you, but your children. Mm, that's good. Well, when it comes to just helping shape the belief system, you know, of our kids, when we are looking at uh, all the things that our world is throwing at us, mm -hmm. unfortunately, um, a lot of people don't even know where to start. They don't even know what to believe. Right. And most people, they don't know what they believe nor why they believe it. You mm -hmm. know, and so often we just we just buy into what we're being told. Mm -hmm. But yet there is a firm foundation and there is a source of truth. And that's the Lord. Right. And when we put our faith and our trust in him and in his word, as we abide in him and he abides in us, then that begins to really take root in our lives and take root in our marriage and in our homes and families. But as our kids grow older, they still need that instruction. You know, Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he or she should go. When they are old, they won't turn or depart from it. Mm -hmm. And so that really that's also speaking into kind of helping find our kids bent. You know, we have something in our book, which is the letter I, which stands for identify your GPS. It stands for goals, passions, and struggles. It's interesting that, you know, even in our children, our three children, and of course your four daughters, you know, they all kind of found their own unique way of mm -hmm. serving the Lord. Yes. So not everybody has to be a, a preacher or a singer, you know, to serve the Lord. Um, right. As my dad used to say, we need more, we don't need more preachers, we need more reachers, mm -hmm. you know. And so whether that's reaching people, you know, through nursing, you know, or through, you know, medicine or through, you know, um, you know, service industry or, you know, take your take your pick in terms of vocation. God wants us all to be in a place of influence, to shine light, and to be that beacon of hope to a world that desperately needs it. How would you encourage parents to kind of help their kids, you know, achieve those goals or pursue those passions or even overcome some of the struggles and setbacks that maybe they encounter in life? I know we've all encountered setbacks. We've all had struggles in our lives. And sometimes those struggles can actually become a set up for something God wants to do even greater. He'll use our pain to become a platform if we'll, if we'll let him. You know, that's normally how it happens. Mm -hmm. it, takes, it takes failure to find brokenness 
and God only really uses people who are who humble themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I you know I didn't talk about this, but let me just say, you know, one of the greatest tools you need as a man is someone to help you. You know, we're not in this thing alone, and we all need guides. Uh, we can't handle this on our own. Mm. You can get in the Word. I get in it every day by myself, but the Lord's there with me. But I long to have relationships, someone who can help me guide my life, even at 74. Mm. I'm wanting someone, I'm wanting to learn more about how to walk in the Christian life and how to help others. I know you've said, you've, you've experienced some struggles as a dad. Oh, yeah. Do you care to elaborate on one of those? Oh, my goodness. So many of them. <laughs> uh, so many of them. I mean, raised four girls. Uh, you just have, we used to travel in a van and have four of them in there and with my wife. Woo, buddy. We took a porty powder with us. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of fun, but I tell you, it's a challenge. Mm. Uh, I tell people, they ask me, you know, what'd you do? And I just loved on them and I tried to teach take teachable moments when they were willing to listen and share with them. And one of the things I found is that what you sow will come back on you. Mm -hmm. And if you just sow love, sow compassion. You know, the, my mom used to say to me, Rodney, here's, here's your GPS. She didn't say it that way, but here it is. Joy. Mm -hmm. Jesus first, others second, yourself last. That's good. We are so selfish. I'm very, very selfish. Mm -hmm. But the greatest joy in my life is when I really let Jesus have control and then I put others second. Hmm. And loving on my wife and loving on my girls, you know, there's nothing I wouldn't do for my girls or my grandchildren or my sons-in-laws, you know. It just doesn't matter mm -hmm. because they're more important than anyone else. And putting others before yourself, hard to do. We're all selfish, but only the Lord in you can help you do that. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about a couple more topics here, uh, and that's the topic of friendship. You know, we, um, unfortunately, we have so many kids today who, and like, and this is, is, is it's, it's not just limited, obviously, to the generation of our youth today, or even those that are coming up. This has been an age-old problem from the beginning, but it's the old saying, you know, birds of a feather flock together, and I think what happens a lot of times is that you know, kids can get around the wrong influences and those wrong influences can contradict what mom and dad, you know, is trying to teach, what mom and dad is trying to invest into their lives. What did you do? What are some of the things that you did with your girls, you know, just in helping them make sure that they find life-giving friendships? Because that's the F and shift is just finding life-giving friendships. How do we help our kids surround themselves by the right kind of friendships? Well, basically you have to, you, we're in this world and we need to be loving on everyone, but those closest to you will determine your level of success. Mm -hmm. And we've had, to, we tried to teach our girls, you know, the most important decision you'll ever make in your life is who you marry. So honestly, we prayed for every one of our girls from the day they were born, that God would bring the right person in their life. Mm -hmm. That number one, that they would receive Christ into their life. And number two, that God would bring the right person into their life. Because your lifelong mate is the most important relationship you can have next to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. So choosing that mate. And we did a lot of things to help them try to choose a mate. I remember your, your daughter, I mean your wife, Michelle, um, she was wanting to, she went to high school and, and the most popular guy in school wanted to date her. And uh, we've always said to the girls, don't date someone you wouldn't marry. Hmm. And don't marry someone thinking it's just them. They can tell you whatever, but everything they are and all their parents and all the history, they bring into the marriage. So their belief system comes into the marriage. That's why the Bible talks about don't be unequally yoked. So anyway, we had to say to her, Michelle, this guy is so popular and you want to go out with him but I just don't believe he's the right person for you. I'm not sure that made her happy, but it was, it shared a conviction. Mm. I would always interview, and I know it's weird today, people saying this, but I was always interview <laughs> people, people that wanted to date our daughters. And um, that didn't always work out great, but it- They're Pretty uh, intimidating. It kept a lot of people that didn't need to be dating my daughters, our daughters away from us. Mm. When they knew 
the word gets out. You got to talk to that guy. <laughs> I was glad I passed the test. Yeah, you did. You passed the test, and I'm so proud of, uh, you know, your children have done so well. They love the Lord. They love you. They love others. And you just done the right thing. And, I, you know, if I were a young man, a dad, I'd want to be around someone like you and Michelle to help me find the um, way of rearing, parent, of rearing children. Mm-hmm. And this book, it, I read it in one setting. I was flying to Denver and read it going out and coming back. And it is so powerful. The family shift. You need to you need to write for this because it can really help you. But I find men sometimes have a hard time reading Rodney mm-hmm. a full book. Yeah. But so if you're desperate enough, you'll read it and it'll really help, really bless you. It'll give you a guide to go by. Well, let's conclude our time and just uh, reinforce the whole. Um, I guess the principle of example. You know, Jesus obviously. Um, you know, his whole invitation to those who followed him was, you know, come and follow me. You know, Paul even said, you know, be imitators of me, you know, do, do as I have done unto you. And I think, you know, it's, it's easier said than done. And it's hard because we're imperfect. Mm -hmm. You know, as parents, we're going to mess up and as spouses, we're going to fall short of each other's expectations. But what would you, what would your words of encouragement and advice be just helping parents lead by example in this time of chaos and confusion now more than ever? Well, um, a couple of things really come to my mind. Number one, everything rises or falls on your daily routine. Uh, John Maxwell, a guy I worked with for a year or so, always used to say the secret to life is in your daily routine. Hmm. It's not in some big cataclysmic event. It's in what you do daily. Life is made up of what you do daily. So having a daily time with God, whether that's 15 minutes or an hour, um, time with Him. One of the most precious things, Rodney, I mentioned to you that it's happened to me is since I've retired, I have more time without pressure just to get in God's Word and let Him speak to me. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Letting God speak to you. Um, The second thing I'd say to you is uh, this principle... Uh, Men, let me mention this to you. The greatest book you'll ever read next to the Bible, I believe, is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Hmm. And it's a, it's a hard read. It's not easy. But it helps you establish habits that are so important in your life. The last one is this. Live with the end in mind. Live with the end in mind. And whether I look at uh, Luke, your son, uh, Rodney Luke, uh, or Ben or Bo or Carter coming up, you know, what are those guys going to say at my funeral? Hmm. And I, what I think matters most is to say, uh, Dad was faithful. Hmm. Grandpa was faithful. He, he ran the race. He, wasn't, he didn't always do the right thing, but he was faithful. He made it through. God's Amen. grace is sufficient. So live with the end in mind. And then yeah, I think another principle that I would say to you dads that I really try to keep in mind is seek to understand before you're understood. And in other words, instead of demanding from your teenage children, take time to listen to them without responding in anger and be a good listener. And then I, I like to repeat back what I, what I think I've heard them say. In other words, is this what you said? Is this where you are? Is this what I, am I hearing you correctly? And then seek to understand and then Help them understand your perspective. But dads, more than anything else in your life, I plead with you. Hmm. I plead with you. Walk in truth. And uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That Everything in life will come from your personal relationship with him. Hmm. That's good. Well, you can't get a better, I think, word of encouragement and counsel and just wisdom you know, that's what we began with in Matthew 7. It's just it's the difference between the wise and the foolish. And it's just making the wise investments in your kids, in your family, and living in such a way where you're building on that solid rock, that solid, firm foundation, so that when the test and the, you know, time, the, the, the testing and, and the difficult times come, which they will, you know, they're the, the glue that's going to hold it together. 
is our relationship with the Lord, our belief system being rooted in the truth of God's word, and ultimately living out God's ultimate plan and purpose for our lives. You know, it's been said that uh, parenting is simple, but it's not easy. (laughs) And I believe that raising kids without question is one of the, if not the single most challenging thing on earth to do. But on the flip side, as the psalmist said, it's also one of the greatest joys and rewards. And so I just want to say this as moms and dads on this Father's Day, no greater father that we have. You know, the Bible says that our heavenly father is a father to the fatherless. And some of you watching this, maybe you don't have a relationship with our heavenly father. Maybe what's missing Maybe the GPS that's that's maybe gotten you off path is maybe just really understanding who God made you to be and to know that he made you so he could have a relationship with you and ultimately so that you could find your purpose in him. And maybe today as a dad, that's what's missing. Maybe what's what you're searching for, you know, is 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 something that's going to fill the void or the vacuum in your life. Maybe you're lacking that foundation. You've tried everything. Maybe you've had success. You've tried, you know, filling that void with material things, but yet you know there's still something that's not right. There's just something missing. And I think maybe what it is, it's God's way of saying, you've tried everything, but you haven't tried me. And so maybe what's missing today is just that moment in your life of surrender and saying, you know what, God, I can't live my life without you. And I need you and I want a relationship with you. And today, if that's your need, listen, I don't care where you are, what you're doing. I just want to, I just want to encourage you just to trust me on this. Just take a moment and I want to encourage you to pray this prayer. I just want to invite you to bow your head and close your eyes. And you, you may be a Christian. You may be a follower of Jesus and maybe you've drifted. You know, maybe you've, you've gotten off the, the path, so to speak, in your spiritual or maybe even your moral life. And you just need to know that God's mercies are fresh and new each and every day. Mm-hmm. And you need to know that we serve a God who's a God of second chances. And all he wants is he just wants you to come back home. He just wants you to surrender your life back to him. And he just wants you to get in, back into a right relationship with him. And that just comes by simply confessing and admitting to God that maybe you've drifted. But you know what? Today is an opportunity for you to just begin once again, renew that relationship with the Lord. Others of you, as I just stated a few moments ago, maybe the missing piece in your life is that personal relationship with Jesus that Rod was talking about. And I would invite you today to solidify, just nail it down once and for all in your heart and in your life, making Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. He died for you. He paid the ultimate price for your sin and mine. He was buried, but three days later, he came back to life. And because of the resurrection power of Jesus, that resurrection power of Jesus can literally change and transform your heart and your life. He can give you a new beginning. He can give you a new purpose, a new destiny. And so right where you are, just pray this prayer. Trust me, just put your faith and put your trust in the person of Jesus and let him do the rest. And so would you pray the spirit in your heart? You can pray something like this. Just say, dear God, I confess to you that I'm a sinner and I turn from my sin. And today I believe in my heart that you died on a cross and you rose again. And today by faith, I invite you to come into my heart and into my life to be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Now, if you just prayed that prayer just then, I just want to say congratulations because you just made life's greatest decision. And one of the things I want to encourage you to do is just right now, I want you to DM me or just send me a text right now on that number on the screen. Just send me a text or just send me a direct message and just say, I prayed or I decided. And if you'll just text those words, I decide or DM me, I decided, then what that will do is it will shoot you a little link. You can fill out that information. And we want to get some material in your hands, a little digital download that you can instantly access and it will help walk you through your next steps in your new relationship with Christ. And then also, as I stated at the beginning, this is a book. It's our gift to all the dads today. So just text that number uh, there on the screen as well. Just text RTL dad 
at that number, 97,000. And we'll give you a free copy of the book called The Family Shift. And so we just want you to know, hey, we love you. Men, happy Father's Day once again. For those of you that pray that prayer, hey, we want you to know we celebrate you. And we can't wait to take the, help you take those next steps in your new spiritual journey. And just know this, we serve a good God. He's with us. He's for us. And you don't have to do it alone. God is there with us to guide us and to help us and encourage us to become all that he created us to be. We love you. We can't wait to be back with you next week.